What's up guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Jesus Conde and today we're going to be doing this painting and we're not going to use reference for it. So let's get started. After scanning my drawing, the first thing that I do is duplicate the, the image, duplicate the, the file on Photoshop and then create a new one on blank so I can divide the screen in three parts. Once I have this, the screen divided in three, usually I use the, the right part, I use that recording for for the social media or something like that, or like an Instagram post or TikTok or whatever. Not usually I paint on the center of it and then on the left I'm going to be using that, which is a very small and thin blank uh, file. I'm going to use that as a uh, palette, palette of colors. So I'm just starting to put down some colors there that are not like I'm not picking there from from anything I'm just uh, trying to use my instincts um, I'm not looking at any pictures or reference it's just what what my memory um, tells me to do which is is not a great idea uh, usually you should use reference <laughs> for this drawing I didn't use any reference either in fact it was done on a subway I was drawing on a subway on a small sketchbook that I have um, and I also, I'm going to take this opportunity to tell you, uh, you should try to find a way to be comfortable uh, drawing or sketching, like the size specifically. And for me, when, I'm, when I use smaller, um, smaller mediums, like a small sketchbook and just pencil and, and eraser, that's uh, very good to me to sketch things up and it doesn't, I don't I don't do like anything super fancy with it or stuff like that if I have a big sketchbook that's when it get like more complicated doing like a small small details and stuff like that obviously it takes takes me way more time than it should so this is a perfect size for me it's like a small sketchbook um, other than that uh, what we're going to do is basically just I'm going to use one brush which is the one of the Michael Adams brushes uh, and here I just realized that I'm not using multiply on the layer of the drawing. It's basically just I'm drawing below it without any um, blending mode. So now I'm putting on multiply. But by doing that, I need to set my eyedropper to uh, current and below uh, layers. Because if I put all layers, I will be picking also the color from the paper. And we don't want that. We just want to pick the colors from below that layer below the multiply layer all right so block that layer so we don't get confused and we can now start painting and something that I also wanted to talk about now that we are working without reference and why are we doing this is that you should have fun when you paint <laughs> you should have some fun uh, it's not always just work and practice for for well obviously you're painting and practicing for a reason which is being better right but if you do that all the time it's gonna feel way too much like work and yeah at some point you should feel like that but not all the time you should remember why are you doing this in the first place like why are you painting and it's supposed to be because you like it right this is something that you like to do something that you want to do uh, it could be me that because I'm getting old and on the industry I work as a concept artist um, on the game Ark Survival Evolved and I've been doing a lot of different things uh, on the past like uh, illustration for, for books and kit books and stuff like that uh, some time ago <laughs> and it's kind of like he's constantly trying to look for jobs and trying to get better also at the same time and it at some point gets a little bit too much uh, repetitive and um, I don't know how to say it. it's kind of like tiring and sometimes you don't want to paint you don't want to do that anymore uh, and you just go to work because it gives you money or stuff like that so you need to kind of find a way to fall in love with it again and doing this kind of painting really reminds me of that of those years when I was starting and I really felt like the magic of doing digital painting just just for the sake of it and also makes me enjoy my work even more because sometimes 
it could be a problem of even the workflow that you're using. Maybe the workflow that you're using, it's being a little bit too technical, to a specific way to organize. Sometimes you have to put a little bit of chaos on it or or all the whole contrary thing. For example, right now I'm doing something that is just me drawing on paper and then painting on top. That's a pretty easy to follow, uh, easy to, to do um, workflow. It's not complicated at all. You just draw something, then scan it or take a picture of it and then you paint. So <clears throat> that's also uh, another thing that I'm trying lately, which is one problem at a time. What's, what's the first problem that you have to solve? In this case, the idea. The idea that I wanted to do was this nature kind of composition, kind of like a small waterfall thing with stones, huge stones, uh, huge rocks. And I solved that problem by doing the drawing. Now the second problem will be the painting, right? So I don't have to worry about the drawing anymore. I don't want to touch the drawing for, for anything. Uh, if I had to do that, I will have done another drawing, you know? But sol solving several problems at the time could be a little bit more difficult. Some people can do that and thrive doing that. Um, not me. I'm <laughs> trying to be as specific and as uh, less worried as possible. I will say if you're a person that has like a lot of anxiety or stuff like that, Maybe try to have workflows that are less stressing, which is something like this. Just doing a drawing and then painting with that drawing. But not doing everything at once, like figuring out composition, color, and shape design and everything at the same time because it's gonna make you crazy. Uh, as you can see, from the colors that I had, I'm creating new ones. And that black color, quote unquote black, is not really black, it's more like I had a purple color and then I put some really dark red on top of it and I made that kind of like blackish looking color but it's, ne it's not really like a black color, never use pure black. Uh, everything looks a bit dirty when you do that, it looks like it's not, it's not something super, um, it's not something colorful, you know, it, it tends to be like way darker, it looks like um, actually if you're doing something like a terror kind of thing, like a horror um, feeling, yeah, maybe you could use some black, you know? So it's not for all, all the um, projects. But in this case, it didn't really fit what I was doing. So the darkest thing that you will see is that color on the left uh, corner, which is a very dark brownish color. So <clears throat> now that we have a lot of ingredients right now, look at you have some shadows, some dark areas on the left. I'm trying to make everything look right, like everything that is dark is dark <laughs> and I don't have anything weird going on. You can have some spots of lighting here and there. But you will see how everything gains a little bit more life once I start using the blue from the sky everywhere. Like right now I'm trying to put a little bit of that on the water, which is that what I'm doing on the lower part. And I cannot be too specific with the water, I don't wanna go and do more details than I should. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like uh, try to control how much detail you're using. Um, if I if I go way too much detail, it starts to feel like way digital. I feel like, especially in this uh, image, when I use a um, very small, well, no, it's not that small, but a small uh, sketchbook to do the drawing, right? It will look like it's not according. Uh, accordingly to the size of the lines that I had on paper. Not that you have to, but I'm trying to keep it like that. I'm trying to be as accurate as possible, like if I was painting traditional or something like that. So <clears throat> you can see I'm doing a little bit of uh, dark colors here and there, um, mostly to give more volume and dark areas to the left side, but also um, that those darks will give more variation to the to the painting like everything cannot be of the same green um, here I'm trying to paint some kind of shadow coming from the left on the mountains because it was looking way too, fl too flat like the mountains didn't have any volume at all so I'm trying to fix that um, and here for some reason I got stuck <laughs> but it's, it's not me like looking at reference or anything I promise I'm not using any of that I don't I don't even have like another monitor 
and my phone is really like in another place like I don't have my phone near me when I'm um, doing painting or working so because I discovered that it distracts me a lot when I have that so I try to have my environment be as productive as possible even to the to the way of doing like um, sometimes I've used timers just to get up and sit down again to be more organized in how much time I allocate to task or or being uh, healthy in general like you cannot be seated all day just because you have to work you know you have to get some rest or uh, the day after it will it will be way worse or the week or the month after you will start noticing a lot of changes in your body not even not all I'm not talking about just um, be, getting a little bit or more fat or something because of being sedentary I'm talking about your your spine uh, even mental health is very is very difficult uh, so there's that that pause that I do usually I do 40 minutes uh, or 35 and then get up stretch a little bit and then come back uh, with a cup of tea or something <laughs> so this one took 80 minutes to do um, and I'm trying to keep them very fast like that as you can see I'm starting to use blue on top of the stones like specifically on the parts that look to the top the parts that look to the sky why is that because surfaces usually reflect uh, this kind of lighting like these blue colors is actually the specular reflection from the sky if uh, I'm not totally sure if I'm correct on that but that's the way I learn it and it's kind of like is every surface has some kind of um, level of, of re reflection right some surfaces are more reflective than the others specifically right now I'm using I'm doing water so obviously water is way more reflective than uh, a piece of uh, stone right but in this case that is um, reflected in the way that the water will have more specific reflection almost like a mirror but because of the waves it will look like this right like with some texture on it but if, if it was calm water it will almost be kind of like just a mirror reflecting reflecting everything just right this tone has a different kind it's more like spread and the reflection is way way more soft so everything that is reflecting is kind of like um, imagine like a very matte uh, thing that is kind of a reflecting color but it's not really like anything definitive it's not it's not a mirror it's not like a ref as reflective as water also uh, it's in shadow so in shadow you will get more of this kind of lighting and reflections in plain um, light like uh, sunlight uh, which is the other stones that I have it will be like just the color of the stone that's it and a little bit of this of the color of the of the sun I guess but it, it wouldn't be too much like we're used to see the, the things on the of the color of the when the light hits as, a, as that's just the color that it is usually the color that something actually is it, you can see that when it's overcast like you know you have cloudy days or something like that that kind of lighting actually shows what the colors really are but in this case like yeah let's let's say that the lighting like the sunlight is actually the color of the thing that we're doing that we're doing um, we also have bounce lights and stuff like that and right now I'm just trying to add that little um, light hitting the water just to have something there you know to catch a little bit of the attention and this is the final result I hope you like uh, this video this painting uh, it took me again it took me 80 minutes please uh, try to have fun when you paint don't not everything is just for your portfolio not everything is for having like an amazing painting uh, as you can see if you see it up close it's very messy like doesn't have anything any detail at all so you can make things look like detail even if they're not uh, that's a very important thing that I learned <laughs> very late and I hope you can do something similar have a good day please give me a thumbs up and if you are interested on the brushes there's a link in the description to buy them I didn't make those brushes they're from another artist but they're really good so I promote them thank you very much for watching and talk to you guys next time bye